Uh, our topic this morning uh, is simple salvation. And uh, when I minister today, you will maybe say, well, Pastor, I've, I've heard most of this before. That's good. That's good. That means, and hopefully you've obeyed it. <laughs> and, um, but today, uh, our message is going uh, far and wide uh, on, on live stream today, and we are uh, desiring that salvation would be for every person, every person today. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And so this morning, for the next few moments, I'd like to speak to you about simple salvation. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for every person, God, that has come into the house of the Lord this morning. We thank you for all those that are watching online today. And, God, that we'll watch in the future. We pray, God, that each and every person will be ministered to by your word and through the power, God, of your spirit. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. Over the last number of weeks, I've had a, a, a conversation with a couple that God has really touched and is ministering in their lives. And the phrase came up in our conversation that the gospel is really simple. And um, when, of course, we, you know, you've probably heard that before, maybe even thought that yourself. Um, and when I was sitting in front of this wonderful couple, and they were sharing with me that it's actually very simple. The gospel, salvation, the message is simple. We sometimes make it complicated, but it is very simple. And Paul gives us, uh, he gives us in this passage of Romans, uh, he gives us a common ground for every person that gets to hear the gospel. He gives a common ground for everybody that needs to hear salvation. That common ground is quite simply for all have sinned. Every person sitting here this morning, every person watching online has been in the same situation. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's not one person today that measures up to what God wants us to be. Everybody has come short. Everybody has reached a place where we are lacking in our walk with God. doesn't matter how long you've been in church, and it doesn't matter how long you've served God. You and I were still a sinner. Every person was a sinner. Every person came short of the glory of God. But Paul goes on to say that we being justified, being justified freely by His grace through redemption, the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Everybody came short, but everybody had a hope. This morning we all fall short, but we all got a hope. Everybody has a hope today, even though every one of us is a sinner. David explains it so well in Psalm 51. Beginning with verse 1, he said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. He says, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. He said, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. I was born in sin. I was a sinner. I needed a hope. I needed redemption. My life needed to be purchased. My life needed to be bought. And Jesus Christ did that for you and for me. Everybody listening this morning, Jesus purchased salvation for your life. He made it simple. He said, I'll do it for you. 
I'll do it for you. Even though everybody fits into the same category of being a sinner, Jesus did it for us. Now look what Paul said of how Jesus did it for us. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait until you and I got to a certain stage of being good. He didn't wait until we proved ourselves. He didn't wait until he had a promise from us that we would serve him. No, rather while we were yet a sinner, he said, I'm going to purchase salvation for them. God's love is unconditional. Unconditional. That's why John writes in in, in 1 John 5, 4, verse 8, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. It's something that he is. It's not something that he does. God is love. His love is unconditional. His mercy is everlasting. And it's new every morning. Lamentations 3 and 22 says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Let me tell you, even while we were still a sinner, Jesus made it very simple. He said, I'm going to make a hope. I'm going to give you a hope. I'm going to allow there to be a hope. And I'm going to make sure that that hope is new and fresh every morning so you get to experience the compassion that never fails with God because God is love. There are people that can't fathom, can't understand how that can be in the conditions of their life and maybe the past that they have lived and all the things that have happened uh, in their past and and up to this point. uh, How could God uh, love me? You can't do anything to make God love you more and you can't do anything to make God love you less. It's something that he is. His love is unconditional. And because you and I needed that love, he took our place and paid the price through the redemption of his life and the shedding of his blood. Even though every one of us was a sinner, he loved us even so. Even so. And so what happens is this uh, first, first understanding is we have to know who we are. We're, we're all on the same, we're all on the same level. Every person is at the same level. We all needed help. We all needed a hope. We all needed a savior. Every person listening today, you are no different. The grace of God. Paul said, for by grace, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, for by grace are ye saved. It is the gift of God. What is it, the gift of God? That's the redemption plan. The grace that is sufficient. The grace that is as powerful as it is needed to be to change your life and my life. See, your faith is the key. Paul writes and says, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's not his grace that's the key. It's not his redemption plan that's the key. He did that while we were still a sinner. The key is whether I will respond through my faith to what he has already done for me. That's why Paul writes in Romans 10 and 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You and I this morning, through the power of his word, can allow our faith to cause us to believe. Everybody that's here and everybody that's listening, your faith can cause you to believe this morning. Paul and Silas are in prison. In Acts chapter 16 and verse 30, and the keeper of the prison, the jailer, he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They were singing and praising God, and the 
gates and the, the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. And his response was, what do I got to do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. See, our faith causes us to believe. And when you believe on Jesus, something happens. When you start to believe on him, something takes place. That redemption plan that he paid for, the shedding of his blood that he already did, even while you were still and I were still a sinner, that causing of our faith reach us into a level of our life where we just say, God, I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to reach out to you. I'm going to reach after you. And that believing starts a process in your life. It's, it's a simple salvation. You don't have to buy it. and You don't have to earn it. and You can't do enough to get it. It's a simple acting on your faith that causes you to believe. It's a wonderful, wonderful gospel. See, what does believing do? It causes you to act. If you believe the house is on fire, it will cause you to act. If you don't believe the house is on fire, you won't worry about it. But if you believe it's on fire, you're going to get out. If you believe, if you believe in this simple gospel, the salvation message, it's going to cause you to act. Something's going to happen. It's going to cause you to ask, what's the deal? What do I have to do? How is it that my life has changed? See, it's no different than it was in Acts chapter 2. In verse 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It causes us to act. Our faith causes us to believe, and believing causes us to act. The acting is, the acting is started with, with a desire to repent, a turning of mind, a turning of attitude, a turning of our action from sin, and a returning to the obedience of God. See, he's been trying to get people back uh, to a, a, a Garden of Eden experience ever since it was broken. That's his desire, is to have a relationship with his people, to, to walk and talk and commune with them on a daily basis. And, and so what repentance does is it turns my, my mind, it turns my attitude, it turns my action from sin, and it returns me back to walking towards God. Baptism is an action in response to repentance. Peter said, in the name of Jesus, for the remission of sins, I'm, I'm, I'm having all my past washed away through the power of baptism. Jesus gives the example that uh, to our lives of how it's supposed to happen. He who is without sin, who's never sinned, says, John, I want you to baptize me. I want people to see. I want people to notice as he, the Bible says he came straightway up out of the water. That whole idea of baptism comes from the Greek word baptismo, which means to be immersed. And, and Jesus allowed himself to be the example for each of us to come up out of the water in newness of life that our sin would be washed away. This is how Paul explained it. Galatians 3, 27, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. When you're baptized in his name, you put on Christ. You put on his name. The power and the authority that is in the name of Jesus. He doesn't just leave us there. Peter goes on to say that ye shall receive the gift 
of the Holy Ghost, also known as the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that he would not leave us comfortless, but that he would come to us in John 14 and 18. He goes on to say what that comforter is in John 14 and 26, that the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. It will lead and guide you into all truth. It will be your strength. It will be your encouragement. It will be your joy each and every day. It's a beautiful experience that happens. You say, well, is that just for a few? No. Peter goes on to say, for the promise is unto you and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It doesn't matter who reads that verse when it says it's for you and your children and all that are far off, you fit into the category of receiving his spirit. And that's why in Acts chapter 2, about 120 gathered in an upper room and suddenly on that day of Pentecost, when it was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. See, those are actions that happen because of your believing. Your believing happens because of your faith. That's why when Paul wrote, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. God's gift of salvation is for everybody. And he's just waiting for somebody to activate their faith. That activation of faith causes you to believe that you respond in action. God, here I am. I need you to forgive me of my past. I'm repenting, God, of my life. I'm going to allow myself to put on Christ in baptism, and I want to receive the power of your spirit into my life. I want to have everything available. This simple salvation, is, it's not complicated. The actions are just the beginning of the born-again experience. People think, well, you know, I... I I've repented, I've been baptized, I've been filled with the Spirit. You've just been born again. Life is just starting. Your new life in Christ has just begun. There is something powerful that God's going to do through the rest of your life. That's just being born again. Oh, that's not the end, folks. That's just the beginning. God filled me with His Spirit 42 years ago. That wasn't it. That was just the beginning. Forty years ago, I was baptized in his precious name in a very cold Cushipaguac River on October the 22nd. It's going to be 40 years. That wasn't it. That was just the beginning. And God has directed and God has guided lives in this building. God is, is directing and guiding people's lives because your actions led you to a simple salvation, a born-again experience. See, that, that growth, it leads us to a relationship with Jesus where we grow and we mature in our spiritual walk. Jesus said, ye shall be witnesses. Acts 1 and 8, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The born-again experience just leads us into what God wants us to do in life. It will produce the fruit of the Spirit in your life. There's a growing aspect of of the born again experience that just starts us onto the fruit of the Spirit. Paul writes in Galatians chapter 5 and 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. 
Against such there is no law. The born again experience is not the end. It's just the beginning of life. Your future is 100% ahead of you of what God has in store for your life. God has so much in store for your life. What you are right now is not what he sees you only being. He has so much in store for you. And if this life was all that there is, it would still be wonderful. But he doesn't leave it there. He is preparing a place that where he is, you can be also. An eternal life, an everlasting life. A, a, a future that's far beyond this life. This is not the end. Just as the born, ex- born again experience is not the end of salvation, this world is not the end of life. John chapter 3 and verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's the simple salvation message. Every one of us was a sinner. And even though we were a sinner, Jesus died for us. Paid the price that you and I, you and I could be saved. Placed within us a faith aspect that everybody has. And as soon as you activate that faith towards Jesus, it will cause you to believe. Believing will cause you to act. You'll act through repentance and baptism in his name and the infilling of his spirit. And your life has just begun. It just has got started. And then he allows you to grow and mature in him. And the fruit of the spirit is produced. And you become a witness for his Wonderful, wonderful kingdom. And while you're doing all of that, he's preparing you a place that where he is, you can be also. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty awesome to me. (laughs) That sounds pretty awesome to me. (laughs) That sounds pretty incredible to me. That's the simple salvation message. You heard it last week. That Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. It's never changed. No matter what the world focuses on, God's only got one focus. And that is you and I would not perish. But that we would have everlasting life. Would you stand this morning? Music. If you're in this sanctuary today. Or if you're watching online, the simple salvation message is for every person. It's for everybody. If you're in this place this morning and you have not experienced the power of repentance and baptism and being filled with His Spirit, today's a great day to allow your life to be born again. If you have experienced the born-again experience, then your life has really just begun. God has so many things in store for you to be a witness for him and to allow his spirit to sing to other people. And while that's all happening, he's preparing a place for you. If oh preacher, I I've never experienced that. Then I would encourage you this morning to activate your faith. Say, I'm gonna give that a try. I'm gonna reach out to Jesus. I'm gonna believe on him this morning. 
And I can guarantee you, as soon as you start to do that, something starts to happen in your life. As you draw nigh unto him, he draws nigh unto you. As you reach out after him, he reaches out after you. And as you call upon his name, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a process, a born-again experience that starts to take place. And you give him everything of your life. God, God, I, here I am. I, I don't have a lot, God. I just, I'm just giving you me this morning. I'm just offering myself to you. I'm giving my life to you, God. You died for me so that I could live for you. And God, I'm asking you, God, to forgive me of my sin this morning. I'm asking you, God, to forgive me of my attitude, my mind, my actions. And God, I want to turn from those to, towards a, a returning back to you, an obedience to you, to your word. And I want that believing, God, to cause me to act through repentance and baptism and being filled with your spirit. I want a life that's going to grow and mature in the things of you, Jesus. I accept that simple salvation message this morning. God, I thank you for every person that is here. I thank you, God, for every person that is going to hear this message. Thank you, Lord, for every person, God, that you died for. Every person that you shed your blood for, God. Every one of us was the same. We just, need, we just needed a hope. And we just needed a salvation. And God, even though we were a sinner, you died for us. And I pray, God, every person listening, let your power and your spirit minister through conviction of your word. And let it accomplish in our lives, God what we have heard this morning in the name of Jesus in Jesus I open the altar today anybody who would like to come and experience anyone who would like to come and rejoice about their experience I open the altar this morning to every person in this building the salvation message is for everybody everybody you say, pastor I, I've heard all that before that's good I hope you've listened and obeyed obeyed it before but if you haven't today's a great day today's a great day today's a great morning this is the day that the Lord hath made you can rejoice and be glad in it this morning you can allow his power oh would you just fill this altar right now hallelujah would you just make your way down to this altar this morning and allow his presence to minister to you and touch you and strengthen you this morning Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah.